Hello, so I'm going to talk about machine learning in very, 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 very little amounts of detail. So this is going to be quite a short presentation, but we're going to cover some of the fundamentals of what the discipline's about, why we do it, and a little example of one of the most simple machine learning algorithms, which is called linear regression. So does anyone know what machine learning is? Machine learning. Yes. <laughs> what does learning do? Simple life and simple life. Sounds interesting. You give them a model of the gene themselves and what they want to say. Okay. Okay. Reasonable, yeah. So people generally argue about what it really is. It has ties to several different things like statistics and optimization theory. It's often to do with predicting some kind of information given another kind, estimating functions or modeling or understanding different kinds of data. This is kind of a messed up quote from someone. I fiddled it around but it's basically studying systems which learn how to perform yeah. some kind of task by using some kind of experience. So that might be sensors they're reading or data that you're feeding them, and they're evaluated by some kind of performance measure as to how well they're performing at the given task. So the one we're going to be looking at today is supervised learning, as he said. That's where we're trying to approximate a function which does something. It goes from one form of input, one part of data, we'll call A to another B, and we have examples of the input to the function and the expected output of it, but not what the function itself is doing. So it could be something like we have a list of square footage of different houses in an area and their price, and we want to find the relationship between the square footage of the house and the price of the house. That way, when we get new examples, so we no longer have the prices, we can say, oh, this is my prediction based on all this other data of what the price would finally be. This generalizes to predicting a lot of different things. So for example, um, voice recognition is a form of classification of words, and basically uh, many, many of the different machine learning tasks just boil down to classifying information. So this is called the supervised learning pipeline. You have your model. You feed in data which is labeled with the real, the real truth of what the function should do. And then once you've got your model, you get data that no longer has labels, and you can spit out a prediction of the output. So the model we're going to look at is called linear regression. It's where you're learning a linear function. So f of x is mx plus c, something like that. Um, most of you may have seen it in different forms. We use y in different countries. They use different constants. But essentially, the function is some constant times our data gives a line in space. So if we have just x and just f of x, we want to learn these two coefficients, m and c. And that will allow us to predict information when we no longer have the label present. So our task given examples of data x and outputs f of x, work out the parameters m and c, which may approximate the function for new data. This is the learning algorithm. It's called Bogo Bogo Learn. Uh, you set the parameters to completely random numbers, and then a million times, you check how far your predictions were from the previous worst, and then you save the parameters that have done best. So the key because we have the data, we can tell how far our predictions using these parameters are from the lowest error. Does this seem like a good learning algorithm? I'm not going to move on until someone answers, so no. why? Because you found it. Yes. Why does that matter? Well, chaos. Yeah. Yeah, that's reasonable. So, we don't make sense to evaluate the error because we'd like to know how far we are away from approximating the function. But we'd actually like to have some kind of way to inform how we're going to learn these parameters, right? So the key is the error function. We need a way of evaluating the error of our model. 
So when we have the data and we have our parameters, we want to be able to say, okay, I'm this far from the true prediction. I have this value of error. Uh, the error for an individual item of data is called the cost. And then the error function is the cost summed over all of the items of data that we have. So what could be a good error function for a model like this? Again, I'm going to wait. Um, so we, we have the data, but we, we make a prediction. So we'll do mx plus c for some random m and x. And then we have the actual output of what it should be. So we have two real numbers. One of them is the true output, and one of them is what we've, we've predicted. Yeah, the difference is a good one. Um, usually we use the squared difference. But yeah, mean squared error. So for all of them, sum up the difference between the prediction and the true one. And then at the end, it's just been divided by two and the number of items that we have. Um, that's not entirely necessary, but it does help. And I'll explain why. So, machine learning, as I said before, can be seen as an optimization problem where we're trying to minimize some kind of error function based on some set of parameters. So is there a way we can adjust the parameters to find the optimum values of them, so the minimum error? As it turns out, yes. So this is called the error landscape. It's a very bad error landscape but it works for two dimensions. If you plot, ooh, wrong button. Oh, there we are. Uh, if you plot the error against the value of one of the parameters, so say this was n, if you try different values of n, then you'll end up at different points, and some point will naturally be the minimum, the best function that you can learn. So if we're here, we know our error function, we know what the value of the parameter is, how would we adjust that parameter in order to get closer to this point? So this is zero, this is some larger number, and this is no error, lots of error. If we're here, so our parameter is here, is at this point on the number line, and we've got this much error, how do we move to decrease the error as much as possible? So previously we were just picking a new random value and seeing if we had no <coughs> error, but there's a more informed way that we can move. It depends how much more informed you want to be. <laughs> yes, it does, uh, in the simple case. We can do a burst bonus, go higher or lower. Go higher or lower. Uh, which would we prefer in this case, higher or lower? Higher. Higher. Why? Uh huh. So, because there's a negative gradient, we're going downhill. We want to increase the parameter. And because there's a positive gradient, we want to decrease this time. So, if we can differentiate our error function and evaluate it for some set of parameters, we can always see which way will move us downhill towards the minimum error and thus learn the best function for this given set of data. This is called gradient descent. It looks a little bit ugly, but it's one of the de facto machine learning algorithms. So, initially, set my values to be infinite. And this says, if they're not changing by very much, then I can stop because I'm no longer shrinking in the function. You want to set the old value to be the one for the previous version of the loop. And then you want to subtract some constant times the derivative of the error function at that time. And this will always move you down <coughs> until you've found the minimum. This is the derivative of mean squared error. Um, it's not written in mathematical notation, so it doesn't particularly matter. But essentially, that's what you would subtract from the parameters at each iteration. And then just some intuition behind it. 
I subtracted the derivative with respect to each parameter from the parameter, we move downhill. And once we've hit the bottom of this bowl shape, that's the minimum error that we can have for that particular function, and it's the most accurate approximation that we can make. <coughs> this has been a really, really simple example. Although this algorithm is kind of one of the fundamentals upon which lots of other things are built. If we modify it so that instead of outputting a real valued number, we output a probability, we get what's called a logistic regression, which can be used to classify information instead of making continuous predictions. And by combining lots of these together is how you build a neural network, which are some of the most powerful machine learning algorithms we have today. Um, that's all I have. It's a short talk. If there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer. At all. Yeah. So, in a lot of research topics, in a lot of different fields over the past few years, there have been problems with reproducibility of results. Uh -huh. And machine learning is one of the fields that has a problem with this. And in its, most, in its simplest case, it's a case of people over tuning their models um, to their test data. Uh -huh. In some, perhaps, more well established fields, biomedical sciences and things like that, they have pretty rigid experimental design guidelines uh, that seek to minimize experimental bias. And so, what sort of safety article research is doing things with machine learning put in place to mimic the sort of, the sort of things that other scientists do to avoid coming up with results that work perfectly on their one set of test data and don't work anywhere else? So, it's, it's a problem with the general culture of the discipline of machine learning at the moment that it's more biased towards doing that. Although if you publish to a serious journal or something, you'll be expected to have certain standards. So instead of just testing against a single test set, you'll do cross-validation. So you'll split your test set into multiple pieces and randomize them. But you'll make sure to save how you randomize them. And you'll use four-fifths of it, say, or nine-tenths to trade the last one to test and take the error measure. And then you'll rotate around which one's being used as the test set so that you no longer have the bias of fitting to a specific set, things like that, um, and using multiple data sets generally. And then if you're, if you're using random values, if you make sure to save the seed or the random set you generated, that's generally enough to make something reproducible. But it still is a problem in the field that people will go, I've got 99% accuracy, I'm not going to release any code, just trust me. And so people who have big names uh, behind them, they'll get accepted into journals even if their claims could be false. So recently Baidu had to retract one of their papers. Um, they claim to beat the image classification record, although it turns out that they've pretty much done what you had said and skewed it to a very specific set of data. I don't read slash dot, but it did certainly make some of the larger news aggregation websites. Yeah, that was, that was quite big news. Because usually if you put Baidu on a paper or Google, they'll just go, yeah, fine, you know. But it, as they've been caught, it's a sign that at least people are checking, so. <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah. Okay, well, thanks.